our beach service this morning. Um, Karen asked how many people I thought would attended, so I said between a thousand and nine thousand four hundred and thirty-two. <laughs> so we had a really, really nice crowd. It was a beautiful morning. Morning, uh, the moon on one side and the sun on the other side, and a very, very good crowd. So it was good to good to reconnect with the community for our annual. Uh, Easter sunrise service on Siesta Key. So uh, thank you for all the folks who helped pull it off, the musicians Wayne and, and Rick and all of our singers that were helping this morning. We're so grateful uh, that we're still able to put on such a great, great service for the community. So thank you all very, very much. A uh, couple of the announcements before we get started. You'll see in your bulletin the one great hour sharing special offering if you'd like to contribute to uh, our disaster relief uh, ministry in the denomination. We're just encouraged to, to put that in the offering and uh, the plates are on your way out as well. Uh, we want to uh, thank the musicians who are here today. Uh, their names are in the bulletin. We're really, really glad that, that they are here to help us uh, uh, celebrate Easter morning. Uh, PW, you'll see the information on Tuesday. And then also lilies. Uh, so if you uh, bought in honor or memory of, you are encouraged to uh, grab a lily on your way out or two, and you can hand it off to a neighbor. If you did not, donate. For a lily, I'm not going to say you're a loser because it's Easter. But you are also welcome to grab a lily on your way out as well. So, um, so I believe they are all the announcements. And so I just invite you to, to uh, breathe in the Spirit of God as we prepare our worship as uh, Wayne brings us into this service. I invite you to join me in our call to worship. Early on the first day of the week, the disciples of Jesus went to the tomb where he had been buried, only to find that the stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. Friends, we gather here as Christ's disciples on the first day of the week to celebrate the good news of the gospel, 
The Lord has risen. Amen.
we will have the hallelujah chorus at the end, so good music today. I invite you to join me in our prayer for adoration. You'll find it printed in the bulletin, but we also put things up on the screen. Let us pray together. God of all ages and all people, the shadows and gloom of Good Friday have been dispersed by the light and color of Easter. We rejoice in your power that turns our sorrow into joy, our despair into hope, our defeat into victory. As the sun has risen to meet a new day, may it rise also in our lives that we may truly be your Easter people, empowered and strengthened to do your will. This we pray in the name of the one who lived, died, and rose again to bring us life eternal. Amen. I invite you now, if you're able and would like to just stand as we sing our first hymn this morning, hymn number 232, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. It will also be up on the screen as well. I invite you to join with me as we share in our Easter litany. Lord God, early in the morning when the world was young, you made life in all its beauty and terror. You gave birth to all that we know. 
Blessed be your name. Early in the morning when the world least expected it, a newborn child crying in a cradle announced that you had come among us, that you were one of us. Early in the morning, surrounded by religious leaders, anxious people, and silent friends, you accepted the consequence for doing good, for being God. You shouldered and suffered the cross. Early in the morning, a voice in a guarded graveyard and footsteps in the dew proved that you had risen, that you had, that you had come back to those and for those who had forgotten, denied, and destroyed you. This morning, in the company of your church on earth and in heaven, we celebrate your creation, your life, your death and resurrection, your interest in us. So we pray, Lord, bring new life where we are worn and tired, new love where we have turned heart, forgiveness where we feel hurt and where we have wounded, and the joy and freedom of your Holy Spirit. To all and to each of the beloved community, we are set free with the right and responsibility to begin again. Thanks be to God. Amen. If the children would like to come forward, we do a little children's time for y'all that haven't been here. We're going to come over here. You, you guys want to come. I've got stuff for you. Come on. You don't have to stay, but come for a little while. Come on. Find a seat. Find a seat. Find a, find a seat. Look. Seats, seats, seats. Oh, good, Miss Barbara. I'm glad you're here. So there, let me just tell parents real quickly. Yeah, come on. Come on. Um, they, you're welcome to stay in church. We also have a nursery, so whatever you want to do, you can do whatever you want. Come have a seat. Find a seat anywhere you want. It's just fine. Anywhere you want. I'm going to stand. All right. So tell me about, tell me about today. What's today? What's today? Easter. It's Easter. What happened on Easter? What? Jesus came to death. Yeah. Jesus came what? He rose, so they, they put Jesus, they killed Jesus, right? And then he came back, and because what? He defeated death, isn't that right? And so Easter, we celebrate all sorts of things. So I, when I do, what do you like to do when you, like to, when you celebrate something? What do you like to do when you celebrate something? Pe do what? Eat, ooh, eat chocolate. Right here, I got chocolate. There you go. Eat chocolate. What else do you like to do? Look what I have. You know what? I what, tell me what you like to do. Visit family and friends. Visit family and friends. I'm, a lot of y'all are going to do that today. You're going to do like some little Easter parties. Sorry about the walking around guys. They're on the. They're probably going crazy there on the um, camera. I like. Do you like bubbles? Look at these. So I like bubbles and then we talked about you guys said it we talked about new life so I have an egg in here what do you think's in the egg it's not chocolate you're gonna have to open it up and see what it is it might be well here's the bubbles here's the chocolate and here's the egg and when you open the egg we think about what's usually in an egg a treat, a treat. okay <laughs> Candy, but what if you, you have, do you have, you're, you guys have chickens. So what, what does a chicken do? When a chicken lays an egg and then it sits on it, what happens to this egg? What comes out of this egg? What do chickens have? Not babies, but what? Oh my gosh. <laughs> teachers, teachers, where are you? What are you teaching them? They have, what do they have? They have baby chicks. So we just open this up and the baby chick reminds us of new life. So. There's enough for y'all to do. Macy and Brooks didn't come over, did they? I've got plenty for you guys. I'll bring it over to you. So um, 
I've got some stuff for you to do. And what you can do, here's your choices. You can stay here, um, and the only thing that we ask is that you, can, that you be quiet when you color. So you can stay here as much as you want. I've got little things that you can put together, which is all about Jesus and, the, and when, when Mary went to the tomb. And then, where's the other part? Oh, here's this. This is a whole thing that you can fill out and you can color and you can do some stuff. So I've got enough of that for you to do. And then if not, there's color crayons here and markers. So you can do it here. You can do it back at your seat. Or if you want to go to the nursery, where's Miss Barbara? Miss Barbara's right here and she's going to go back to the nursery with some kids. So if you want to go to the nursery, you can just take it back there. All right. So I'm going to have a little prayer with you and then we'll hand these out. So you each can have one of these, and then I'll give you these that you can have, all right? So can you pray with me? Can you do that? Hi, Isla, how are you? You're good. And Beatrice, let us, let us pray. Dear God, we give you thanks for Jesus who loves us and wants us to be happy. Let us enjoy this day and help others to smile. Amen. All right, thank you. So the font reminds us that, that today is pretty amazing. Amazing to realize that God loves us so much that nothing in all of creation can ever separate us from God's love. Jesus has risen. He has risen indeed. So, take a moment, remember your baptism, be thankful, and live in this amazing grace as you love one another. I'm so excited to have some kids. I haven't forgotten you guys. I'll get it when we do something else. I'll bring it over to you, okay? All right. Please join me in prayer. Great and holy Lord, we give you thanks for the beauty of this day that reminds us just how much we are loved by you. You greet us on this Easter morning with all sorts of hopes and joys. Even though some of us might have come here not certain what we would find, some of us coming here still grieving and mourning, some of us coming filled with a skip in the air. And here we find you, O oh Lord, ready to greet us with sounds of music and children's laughter and the buzz of excitement, knowing that the word has gotten out, that he is not dead, he is alive, that you, O oh God, rose from the grave to greet us on this day. And so we gather to offer our prayers of thanksgiving and praise, to lift up our prayers of concerns for those who find this day not a day in which they can greet you in the way that we are able to. We continue to pray for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine as they continue to fight against um, those who would oppress them or those who would hurt them. And we pray for peace, peace for understanding and peace within your world. We lift up those this day that have tests that they will be taking and those who are in the hospital or nursing homes or rehabs and pray that their healing will come upon their body and their souls and their spirits. We pray for our community, O oh Lord. We pray for those this day that are finding it hard to put food on the table or roof over their head those who are uncertain what the future will bring, those who are fighting addictions or depression or hopelessness. And we ask for your presence to be with them in powerful and wonderful ways. 
We pray for your church here and around the world that we will be a church that does indeed spread good news, welcomes all, brings light into the world, and embraces goodness and mercy and forgiveness. So on this Easter morning, touch our hearts in such a way that the joy of this day will spill over into the lives of those that we touch, and then it will spill over to the lives that they touch until all are touched by your goodness and your grace. We lift our prayers to you this day, O Lord, in the prayer which you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So let's take a moment and uh, give thanks to God for all the many blessings we have and for the opportunity to continue to uh, support the ministry and mission of Pine Shores. Uh, I learned something uh, new this morning that um, you can actually text your, your offering. Isn't that an amazing thing? You don't even need to know what cash is anymore. You just need to know the telephone number. There are a number of ways that we support our mission and ministry. You'll see it up online, but most of all, we just want to thank God from all, for all the blessings that we have in our lives. So if you are so uh, mindful of the, our ministry for the disaster relief, we just encourage you to, to support the one great hour sharing. And so let's stand as we give God thanks for all the blessings that flow into our lives so we can share them with others. The scripture reading this Easter morning is from the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter, first 18 verses. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went to the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? 
Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that, she had, that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
So the story begins, and it's early in the morning while it's still dark. So this got me thinking about darkness and how darkness indeed affects us all. And sometimes it's pretty surprising how being in the dark impacts you. It does all kinds of things to your, to your body and to your brain. And science suggests that, that darkness can make us more likely to lie and to cheat. More likely to cause us to make mistakes at work or in our relationships. And darkness makes us see things that we don't normally see. What do we do in the dark? We stumble sometimes, we get lost. It startles us and in the brain it changes our chemistry and it heightens our person's uh, perspective of anxiety. So I just find it very humorous that recently the word of the day in my daily calendar was nyctophobia, which is fear of the darkness. It was dark on that Easter morning, and that means the resurrection occurred while it was dark. I read sometime in the pre-dawn dawn hours on that Sunday morning, a great mystery transpired in secret. No sunlight illumined the event, no human being witnessed it, and now even 2,000 years later, no human narrative can contain it. It exceeds all of our attempts to pin it down because it's a mystery known only to God. Whatever the resurrection was and is, its fullness lies in holy darkness, shielded from our eyes. And all we can know is that somehow, in that ancient tomb, God worked in secret to bring life out of death. When it's dark outside, it's hard to be sure what you're seeing. Peter, he sees an empty tomb and runs away. The beloved disciple sees, believes, though does not comprehend. And Mary sees and she weeps. Three key characters in our faith story, three different responses to God who brings light out of darkness, life out of death. Now, several years ago, Karen and our middle school youth group went on a summer camping trip to Northwest Georgia. And they, one of the things they did was splunking, which is in the United States and Canada known as cave exploring. Now it's called potholing in the UK and in Ireland, just to know we're inclusive. And they were told to wear a bunch of old clothes because they were going to get dirty. And they were to bring a flashlight. Uh, and that would enable them to keep their hands out. So Karen had to buy one of those very little cute devices that goes around your head to help her guide her in the dark. And the leaders of the little excursion let the, the group like explore for a while, then they gathered them all together and in the cave and they sat down and they talked about darkness and light and uh, make the point, they asked all the folks to turn off their lights in the cave. And when the last light was extinguished, it was completely dark. Karen said, it was so dark, that I could not even see my hand in front of my face. Complete darkness. And what the interesting thing she said was, I kept looking for the light. And one of the things about being in darkness is that your eyes will always search for the light. The resurrection makes it easier to find the light for us. And that's the amazing thing. When darkness is interrupted, like today, 
Easter morning with an explosive recognition of the resurrection, God who spoke light into existence with the words, let there be light, has raised the one whom we declare is the light of the world, the light of our lives. So we have much to celebrate this Easter morning. We celebrate the triumph of the resurrection, life over death, particularly as we wander out of the darkness of a pandemic into light. Because he lives, we live. And the risen Lord has opened for us and for everyone the path to life. We celebrate the triumph of the resurrection, life over death, even as war rages some 5,600 miles away in Ukraine. We surround the victims, the refugees, the medical profession, the responders, and those who fight against tyranny and oppression with the light that will not be overcome with darkness. We celebrate the triumph of the resurrection, life over death, as we struggle with our own cultural problems with increased gun violence in our streets and subways and gathering places, addiction and depression, and the need to seriously address the complex, multifaceted problem and the socio-culture factors affecting these issues. We celebrate the triumphant Resurrection of Jesus Christ, life over death. God calls us to be the light that shines in the darkness. So we celebrate this day, the triumph of the resurrection, life over death, for those of us who are grieving at the loss of someone they loved, for someone who is ill, for a friend who is dying, for those who mourn. The good news of the day is the resurrection happened because he lives life worth living prevails and that's what happens when ordinary people just like you and me brush up against an extraordinary loving and merciful God life's worth living One preacher wrote, I'm finding it increasingly true that clarity, hope, and healing comes when I am willing to linger in hard and barren places, places where the usual platitudes fall flat and the easy answers prove inadequate. Jesus comes in the darkness, and sometimes it takes me a little bit longer to recognize him. He doesn't look the way I expect him. He doesn't... Let me cling to my old ideas. And he disappears just as I'm about to grab hold of him. But he comes, he calls my name. And in that instant, I recognize both myself and him. Life worth living prevails. And we all have profoundly individual and unique opportunities, encounters with Christ. And what matters What matters is finding in that empty tomb the hope you will need for whatever is going on in your life. Your own struggles, your losses, your traumas, and your disappointments. Because in receiving new life of Easter, Christ is present dwelling in you. Today, tomorrow, and always. Even when you don't recognize him. Or you see without seeing The risen Christ remains close by, ever so close. So God's love shines outward on this Easter morning. And the resurrection gives us, each of us, the possibility to to live our lives as authentic expressions of who we are created to be. Discerning in prophetic, prayerful and playful, purposeful and passionate. We are people fueled with a love that has no boundaries, a love that will not let death or darkness overcome it. So friends, enjoy the rest of this day. In fact, enjoy every day and enjoy each other. 
be open and alive to what is possible. We invite you to use the full capacities of your resources, of your being to serve the Lord and embody and practice in principle who Christ is. Love one another as Christ loves and remember always, remember there is a time to test and a time to trust. Today is a time to trust. The Lord has risen. The Lord has risen indeed. Let's pray. Holy God, do your work in us now as we go about this day, this Easter morning, knowing what new life is. So when darkness comes, when we feel alone, help us to sense your presence. The resurrection makes it amazingly possible for us to see what is possible and the light that you shine in our lives. For indeed we do pray, amen. So we're gonna stand and affirm our faith and then after that we're gonna sing and then uh, we'll have a blessing and then we'll listen to the hallelujah chorus. And, and so you are invited, this is a, this is the one time a year that you can go up into the loft with all the angels and sing with them. Uh, the Alleluia Chorus, they, they have some scripts, some, some up on the scores up there for you. So you can do that during the hymn of dedication just before. Let's affirm our faith by using our affirmation as printed in our bulletin and up in our screen. So let's stand as we say what we believe. We believe in God who lights the dawn and rolls away each stone of doubt, who surprises us with incredible gifts of family and friends, silence and laughter, who raises us from sadness and despair to the possibilities of blessing and joy. We believe in Jesus, friend of the poor and searcher for the lost, who comes to us in our grief and calls us by name. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the gentle messenger of God, who guides us in the dark, beckons us to do good, and watches over us with tender compassion. We believe that we are Easter people. Let's sing together our hymn of dedication, Christ is Alive.
we're grateful that we can gather and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. And we just encourage each of you to get connected to a church in your home. If you're visiting or here in Sarasota, there's plenty of the beloved communities that do great work in ministry. So attach yourself to the vine and become a partner in ministry with a community of believers. So now may the Lord bless and keep you and may the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and may the Lord grant you peace this day and for all of eternity. Blessings to you on this Easter day for the Lord has risen. The Lord has risen indeed. <laughs>
Happy Easter.